Hi everyone, welcome to Smart Math Online Tutor. Through this video, I'm going to give you a knowledge about parallelograms and their properties. So let's get started by looking at what is a parallelogram. A quadrilateral with opposite sides parallel is called a parallelogram and when we look into the properties of a parallelogram, it can be said that the opposite sides of a parallelogram are equal as I have marked in the diagram. And at the same time, the opposite angles are also equal. So that is, if I mark these two angles as A and if I mark these two angles as B, now you can see the opposite angles are equal. And when you come to the next property of a parallelogram, the area of a parallelogram is bisected by its diagonal. That is, if you draw the diagonal like this, diagonal is the line joining the opposite vertices. So, if you join the diagonal, then the area of the parallelogram is divided into two equal halves by the diagonal. Same thing can be shown using the other diagonal as well. And the final property of the parallelogram is that the diagonal bisect each other. So, if you draw the two diagonals of the parallelogram like this, they intersect at a point and at the point of intersection, they bisect the diagonal by one another. So, these are the four basic properties of a parallelogram. Now, we are going to see how to apply these properties in some questions. So, let's get started. Look at this question. Based on the information given, we have to find the length of DC. So, DC. Fine. Let us get started. We know ABEF is a parallelogram. And since it is a parallelogram, we can say Fe is equal to AB because they are the opposite sides. And similarly, if you take the parallelogram ABCD, they are AB and DC are equal because they are opposite to one another. Now, you can see AB is equal to Fe and at the same time AB is equal to DC. Therefore, we can write Fe and DC are equal according to the axiom. Now, we know Fe is 5 centimeters, therefore DC also will become 5 centimeters. Then the next part of this question tells us to find the magnitude of the angle ABE. ABE angle is this angle. ABE angle. So ABE is opposite to AFE. In a parallelogram, we know that opposite angles are equal. Therefore, this angle is equal to 45 degrees. Moving on to the next part of this question, we have to find out the angle ADC. ADC is this angle. Since ABCD is a parallelogram, once again, we can apply the same theory that the opposite angles of a parallelogram are equal. Then this angle already we have found to be 45. So, ABC is equal to 45 plus 75 degrees, that is 120. ABC is equal to ADC, therefore ADC also will become 120 degrees. Moving on to the next question, we have to find the magnitude of BCD. BCD is this angle. Now, AD and BC are parallel. Since they are parallel, this angle over here and this angle over here are allied angles, which tells us the sum is 180. So, already we have found ADC to be 120. Therefore, the angle BCD will be 180 minus 120, that is 60 degrees. Moving on to the next part. Based on the information given, find the sides equal to DC, right? Now, we can see that DCFE is a parallelogram. So, DC is equal to EF. Similarly, ABEF is also a parallelogram. Then, again, AB is equal to EF. Now, in both these cases, EF is equal to DC and AB. Therefore, we can write down AB is equal to EF and then AB is equal to both EF and DC. So, there are two sides equal to DC that is AB and EF. 
The next part of this question is to find the magnitude of the unknown angles denoted as x, y and z in the diagram. So, let us get started with z. Now, d, c, f, e is a parallelogram that is marked in the diagram and we know in a parallelogram opposite angles are equal. So, if this angle is 60, this angle also will be 60 as this is 60 since the opposite angles are equal. So, we can write down that in our next step. Then, we know here it is marked as 90 degrees. This is a right angle. So, 90 minus 60 is the value of z that is 30 degrees. Now, let us come to the next part. DC is parallel to EF that is marked in the diagram. DC is parallel to EF. Now, since they are parallel, the angle x over here and the 60 degrees are allied angles. They are allied because the two lines are parallel. So, DEC or the value of x becomes therefore 120 degrees. And when you come to the next part, AB is parallel to EF. Therefore, the angle AEF and EAB are equal to 180 degrees that is these two angles this angle and this angle are allied and thereby we can find out AEF is 130 degrees. Now we know angle around a point is 360 so that AEF plus X plus Y is equal to 360. We have already found X we know AEF now therefore we can find out the value of Y to be 110 degrees. So, this is how you have to simplify this question in order to find out the unknown angles. Moving on to another question. Based on the information, we have to prove Qx is equal to Sy. Qx is equal to Sy. Now, in this case, we have to use congruency of triangles. So, let us get started. First of all, let us write down the two triangles we are going to consider. That is the PXQ triangle and SRY triangle. Right. Now, in these two triangles, it is already given that PQRS is a parallelogram. Therefore, PQ and SR are equal because they are opposite sides of the parallelogram. And then, we can write down Px is equal to Yr that is marked in the diagram. Therefore, that is data. And then angle Qpx, angle Qpx that is this angle and this angle are alternate. Now, you can see the z shape over here. So, these two angles become alternate and they are equal to. So, accordingly, we can say the two triangles are congruent under the case SAS. Once when these two triangles are congruent, the remaining corresponding elements becomes equal. So, accordingly, we can write down QX is equal to SY. The reason is corresponding sides of congruent triangles. And the second part of this question tells us to prove Qx is parallel to Sy. Now, previously we have proved they are equal. Now, we have to prove they are parallel. The same uh, old proof we can use here. These two angles QPXQ that is this angle over here, this angle and this angle are, are equal because they are corresponding angles of congruent triangles. Then we know P x q and q x y this place here it is a straight line it is a straight line therefore the sum will be 180 similarly we can write down here also it is a straight line so it will be 180 the sum of the two angles so we can equate the two equations above because both are equal to 180 and in the previous part already we said the corresponding angles of congruent triangles are equal. So, these two are equal to one another. When these two are equal, the remaining two angles must be equal. So, the angle QXY is equal to SYP. So, let me mark those two angles as equal in the diagram like this with theta. So, now you can see the two thetas marked in the diagram. Those two are alternate angles. If alternate angles are equal, 
we can say the line forming the two angles are parallel. So thereby we can write down QX is parallel to SY. The reason is alternate angles are equal. And then moving on to another question. PQRS is a parallelogram. Bisector of PSR and QRS meets the point meets at the point X on PQ. So we are going to draw the information like this on a diagram. So we drew that. Then the second part is to prove PX is equal to PS. Right. So let's take PSR to be 2A and QRS to be 2B respectively. So let me mark that data in the diagram like this. So if this is 2A, since SX is the bisector, I mark a and A on either sides of the bisector because uh, total will be 2A and when you come to Bs, you can mark it like this. Since Rx is the bisector of that particular angle, I mark the two Bs on either sides of the bisector. Right. Now, let's get started for, with the proof. PQ is parallel to SR. PQ is parallel to SR. It is marked in the diagram. This is a parallelogram. So, they, they, these two sides are parallel. Therefore, we can tell 2A plus 2B is 180. That is 2A plus 2B is 180. Because the two lines are parallel, they form allied angles. Right. I mark that equation as my first equation. And then I take in triangle PXS. A plus 2B plus this is this A. A plus 2B plus this angle is equal to 180 degrees that is the reason because it is the sum of interior angles and then first equation is equal to the second equation because both are equal to 180 degrees so let me equate the two equations like this and then for you to understand easily i write 2a like this a plus a and then let me cancel the equal things on either sides. I can cancel one A like that and the two B like that. Now you can see the remaining parts in both the sides. PXS angle and A. They are equal. So, PXS is equal to A. Let me mark it on the diagram like that. Then, it's already given. PSX is also A. The two angles of a triangle are equal. Therefore, the two opposite sides of equal angles are also equal forming PSX to be an isosceles triangle. So, therefore, that is the end of that proof. And then, look at the next part. Prove X is the midpoint of PQ. We have to prove X is the midpoint of PQ. We can apply the same previous set of proof. To prove that RXQ is an isosceles triangle, use the same way and you can prove QX is equal to RQ. The same procedure, so I'm not going to explain it much. Right? So now I have proved QX is equal to RQ. Then we know. PS and RQ are also equal because they are opposite sides of the parallelogram. Then QX is equal to RQ, RQ is equal to PS. So you can write down PX is equal to PS because it's already proved before. And now we can say therefore PX is equal to XQ and if Px is equal to x cubed, definitely x must be the midpoint. So, we can say thus x is the midpoint of p cube. And the last part in this question, we have to prove p cube is equal to 2 times ps. So, with what we have proved, we can write down px is equal to ps, that is already proved. px is also equal to x cube, that is also proved. And then x cube is equal to ps, this is an axiom. When same thing is equal to two different things then the two different things again become equal and then pq can be written as px plus xq but both px and xq are equal to ps 
separately. So I can write down instead of Px and Xq, Ps plus Ps like this, which gives you Pq is equal to 2 times Ps. So hope I made myself clear with the properties of a parallelogram and how to apply them in geometrical proofs. See you with another smart math tip. Until then, goodbye.